Okay, welcome to basic animation in Python 3, part four, using images. Um, so for this uh, program, this animation program, so far what we've been doing is changing the player's shape uh, from a square to a circle, square to a circle, square to a circle. It's animation, but it's kind of boring. Um, so in this case, what we wanna do is we wanna actually use some images. Um, so what I've got here is I've got two images uh, from my uh, Space Invaders tutorial. Um, I've got Invader and I've got Invader 2. Okay, so it's a very simple animation where they're going to be jumping back and forth between two different frames. And that's an important keyword that we'll be using. Okay, so let me explain how images work in the Turtle module. If you haven't seen any of my other uh, tutorials, this is kind of important. Uh, one of the limitations of the Turtle module uh, is that you have to use GIF or GIF images, however you want to say it, .gif. You can't use PNGs, you can't use uh, what uh, JPEGs, anything like that. I think you can use bitmaps uh, if you even know what those are anymore. Um, but you got to use a GIF. Um, so that's one of the limitations. So what I've done is I have a folder where I've put my code and I have these two same files in here. And this is how you got to do it. The first step is you need to register the shapes. So and this basically tells the computer, tells Python, I've got these shapes and I want to use them. Okay, so I'm going to type win.register shape. And in this case, it's invader.gif. And if you don't register it, it's not going to work. Register shape invader. 2.gif. Okay. Now at this point, I strongly recommend testing the program, and you're not going to see any changes. Okay. But hopefully, you'll see no errors, and this is working fine. Um, a lot of people, uh, particularly Windows users, this doesn't work for them, and they have to enter the full path of the users and blah blah blah. There's a bunch of stuff. You have to enter the full path to that file. Um, Windows and Linux usually doesn't matter. Um, sometimes I think it depends on your uh, editor. Uh, in the case of Genie, I don't need it, and I'm on a Mac right now. Okay, so I've registered the shape. So now instead of a square, I want to use invader.gif. Okay, so down here, say invader.gif. Uh, invader.gif, and this is going to be. I uh, say so it's invader2, and this is going to be invader2.gif. So basically, I'm just switching back and forth. I'm going to get rid of this in a, in, a, in a bit there, but you get the idea. Okay, so all I've done is I've swapped where it says square, I've put invader.gif. Okay, and where it said circle, I've put invader2.gif. Okay, and that should be all we need to do. Should be. Let's try it out. Okay, there we go. So we got our cool little Space Invader character and its little legs are moving back and forth every half a second, just like we programmed it. Okay. Now, what I wanna do next is I wanna update the code just a little bit um, with the idea of frames, because that's gonna come in handy in our next uh, video. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say player.frame equals zero. Okay, so as I mentioned in the first video, when you animate, it's, it's a series of frames. Each frame is slightly different to the previous one. Now combined, your eye sees that as smooth motion. Okay, so what I wanna do here is instead of using the shape, I'm gonna use frames. And this, there'll be a reason for that, which you'll see later. So instead of if player shape equals invader.gif, I'm gonna say if player.frame equals two equals signs zero then I'm going to change the shape to invader2.gif and I'm going to I'm going to set the frame player.frame equal to one because now I'm on frame one it starts at zero not starts at one that's kind of a programming thing and then here uh, if player.frame equals one I'm going to send it back to the original invader gif and I'll say player dot frame equals zero. Okay, so I'm just cycling back and forth. Now, if I had an invader three, I could go if player frame equals one, player shape equals invader three, 
player frame equals two, and I can go that way. But in this case, I only got two frames. Again, I'm gonna test my code just to make sure it's working. And there we go. Okay. So there's a lot more in that one than we've had in some previous ones. Um, so we had to register our shapes, and we also are using the concept of frames. Uh, like I said, this will come in handy a little bit later uh, in one of the future tutorials uh, coming up. So basically, if we're on frame zero, we want to show the second invader, and now we're in frame one. And then if we're on frame one, we want to jump back to the original image and tell it that we are on frame zero. Okay. So I'm going to stop that there, and we'll come back for part five here shortly. Thanks for tuning in.